Hello there, everyone. The Andrada here, and welcome back to episode 94 of our Enigmatica 6 Expert Let's Play series. I think I'm pretty sure it's 94. We'll find out. Anyway, uh, today we are working on getting ourselves a nice cool pump jack for some crude oil. We're squeezing some coal coke into graphite rods and we're prepping ourselves for our, our uh, astro sorcery stuff and things, our fluid laser, all that good stuff. Let's get started. Hello there, my friends, and welcome to another wonderful night here in the world of the Andrada, in which we're going to go ahead and sleep because we're not doing any astro sorcery at the moment um, because, well, we got work that we need to do. So. In between episodes, I went ahead and did a little bit of work, as always seems to be the case. Nothing too super duper crazy um, that I can think of. Just a lot of micro crafting. Like, take a look at our crafter manager. Uh, our crafters are, again, absolutely full. And if I think I, I think I showed this last episode, it was fairly not full. It's full now. So let's go ahead and talk about what I've done. Uh, a lot of auto crafting. Thank God for auto crafting. If anybody's playing this pack and they have not set up red or uh, refined storage and set up auto crafting, uh, more power to you because you're you're a champ. I don't know how in the world it's possible for you to play this pack without auto crafting. Honestly, I don't know how it's possible to play red or to play Minecraft without auto crafting in the first place. It's literally one of the first things I generally rush to outside of an out. Uh, a um, expert pack because I, I heavily use auto crafting. It just makes things so much easier. Uh, I know that there's people out there who don't like it. And yeah, you know, I salute you. Anyway, uh, we've gone ahead and upgraded to Neotic tier here because we had to make Neotic crystals anyway. And now that we have Astral Sorcery, it's fairly simple to do. And not that it was difficult to do without Astral Sorcery uh, because Neotic crystals are just resonating gem and stardust and really there's nothing crazy about this resonating gems is just aquamarine dropped into a mana pool and then the stardust is just crushed down uh star metal ore so yeah uh, over here let's see we have lava being refilled again we have liquid starlight molten plastic memory essence molten plastics chilling i added two more here for destabilized redstone and crude oil which is empty we're going to get to that this episode um and if we pop back here i believe not here, but here. Yes, uh, I set up two magma crucibles uh, in order to do the lava thing and to do the destabilized redstone thing. Uh, so destabilized redstone is just magma crucible with uh, redstone in there, destabilizes it, bam, and then magma crucible with cobblestone is lava. There are better ways to get lava. We could set this up in the nether and everything and do that, but like we have... 10,000 cobblestone. I can turn my cobble gin on easily at any time and not have to worry about it. it. We're really not using a lot of lava, so having it passively generated is perfectly fine with me. It's not anything too crazy. Um, Let's see. What else did I do? I automated our metallurgic infuser, uh, a singular metallurgic infuser. If we go pop back over here... Do I have this here? Yes, I have it here. So basically I have that barrel that was sitting above it, all the items pipe into the barrel, and then I have a metallurgic infuser. Uh, actually, I don't have an out over there because the out is this interface right here. And then I have uh, a controller set up to control the inputting and outputting because there are certain items that you need to input into the metallurgic infuser in order to get the, uh, well, the infuse, this stuff. Uh, so we have an insert uh, or an extract that's blacklisting the coal, diamond dust, redstone dust, and refined obsidian dust, and then also blacklisting the insert. So this is going to handle the crafting inserts, and then this one is going to handle the infusing inserts. So notice this isn't on blacklist mode. This is not the ideal way to set up our metallurgic infuser. We are going to move this to a different system as soon as we get an enrichment chamber set up, uh, which is going to be very soon because we'll talk about it. But recipe wise, we uh, we need an enrichment chamber ASAP because there's some expensive stuff that we don't want to deal with. Uh, and dissolution chamber is still doing its thing. I did go ahead and upgrade back here to a elite cable uh, and upgraded this to an advanced connector just so that it can move more power because our dissolution chamber, I've been told, uses 25,000 RF per tick. And so I just want to make sure that we're not going to, you know, bottleneck this and, and not have enough power. Uh, outside of that, the only other thing that I did automation wise was set up a fluid mixer over here. 
this guy here automated the same way that we have this pretty much uh, where it is, uh, you know, items go in, items go out. And this is what's making our liquid chorus. Let's see, liquid, or I'm sorry, not our chorus, but our crystallized chorus. This stuff here also makes mineral. We are going to have to set up another one of these for our molten ender slime, I think is what it's called. Molten pink ender slime. We'll set up another one of those to handle this, but this one can just always run and then we'll have it fill up a, uh, a fluid cell like we have with everything else. Um, but anyway, that's basically the only other thing that I've done, uh, though I think I did add. I don't know why this is funky. Nope, I was going to say I added volume upgrades to this, but I added speed upgrades to these because we had a few extra in the system. So we have that going for us now, which is uh, great. Yeah, basically, that's that's where we're at. So today we are going to continue working on our astral sorcery stuff. Uh, Kind of, sort of. We're gonna we're really working towards getting our fluid laser bases and fluid laser drills. So we need a total of three of these. And a refresher, this is the recipe for them. So if we take a look into our handy dandy backpack, I have all of the stuff we're gonna need for this. Though my glass lens got distributed funky here. There we go. Uh, all the stuff that we need to make three of these three tartaric gems here, except for the induction uh, matrix, the basic induction cell here. Why? Well, if we go in here, because I taught the system how to make the basin induction cell, if we click on this, we need graphite electrodes. You remember this came up a while ago. We had been uh, it, it was something that was on our on our list or whatever. And we uh, we end up needing them now in order to make the energy cube. We need graphite electrodes. And how do you make graphite electrodes? Well, uh, we actually have the arc furnace electrodes blueprint here, so we can easily make it in here. Four of these is going to equal one at 100 percent integrity in order to get this hop graphite though we have to smelt up uh hop graphite dust energized smelt redstone furnace however we want to do it we need to get this hop graphite dust and how do we get that well we squeeze it basically for now this is our first steps uh we are going to build ourselves an industrial squeezer from immersive engineering give it eight coal co coal coke dust and that will get us one hop graphite dust or we can do pet coke uh but i don't even know what the heck pet coke is it looks like it's from a coker which is uh coal coke and honey and liquid and yeah not not not, not happening coal coke dust is the way that we're going to go eight of these is going to equal one of these now there is another recipe as you can see here the enrichment chamber which actually has the amount of coal coke dust that we would need which is absolutely fantastic in order to get an enrichment chamber, though, we need two of those induction cells plus two graphite electrodes. So it is not happening anytime soon. But we need an enrichment chamber because if we go look at this right here, the simple machine frame, which if you look here, I already made three of these. Uh, the simple machine frame, everything here is fairly easy except for the refined obsidian. If you know anything about mechanism, refined obsidian, this is a standard recipe for it. It is refined obsidian dust and osmium. Except for this part. 160 millibuckets of refined obsidian per osmium ingot to get a refined obsidian ingot. And if we take a look at our refined obsidian dust, each one of those only gets us 10 millibuckets. So it requires 16 of these refined obsidian dusts to get enough that we need to make the refined obsidian. If we were to enrich this, this would get us eight per. So it would take our 16 and divided by eight. It, it, it This 8x is our usage. So we would just need two refined obsidian dust to do this. And how do we make refined obsidian dust? Well, that's diamonds and obsidian dust. So it's a lot of diamonds. It's 16 diamonds per uh, refined obsidian ingot right now. So we are absolutely going to be getting our enrichment chamber because our laser drill is ultimately going to cost us advanced induction cells, which is going to require us to make advanced energy cubes, which is going to require three basic induction cells each. And each of those is going to require uh, simple machine frames. So absolutely, it, our next goal is this enrichment chamber. That is what we are working towards. In order to do so, though, we're going to have to make ourselves our squeezer, which I have everything for, I believe this is, yeah, this is my squeezer area. And then down here, you're also going to notice that we have another thing. Uh, it was mentioned to me, which I completely forgot about. We were talking about crude oil in the last episode and how do we get crude oil and what do we need to do? 
Immersive has the pump jack. Like, duh, the Andrada. The, the pump jack completely exists. Uh, it's under here under oil processing, and it is a pump jack. Just like, you know, if you if you live anywhere in the desert or anything like that, you know what a pump jack is. And it pumps oil. Like, as simple as that. So we're going to go ahead and work on setting that up as well. So let's go ahead and take care of that first really quick. Or, you know what, let's do this really quick because we're going to just set this. We're going to put the cold coke in here and we're going to forget it and we'll just let it go. So anyway, uh, and I taught the system how to make all of this stuff. That's why we are out of room in our system for any more, uh, well, any more anythings really. So we need to set the squeezer up, uh, and you know what? Let's go ahead and set it up in our factory. We do have an industrial foregoing area here. I don't know how large this is gonna be, but it doesn't seem to be that large based on the materials that are needed. So let's go ahead and check out what we need to do to build this. Um, and you know what, is there a, real quick, I'm gonna check and see if there are building gadget patterns for immersive engineering in the folder, cause that would be super handy. Cause I hate having to build these things. Uh, looking in here, copying and the, oh, is it three? Is it three, whatever, where does things go? So uh, yeah, I'll be right back. And the answer is a resounding yes. So we can go ahead and grab our copy paste gadget. We can go over to our template manager. I copied this to my clipboards and then we just have to hit paste and you're going to see it says name, squeezer, author, Enigmatica. So then we can just take our copy paste gadget, pop on over to our factory and let the gadget do the work for us. Check that out right there. Bam. Uh, so where is the front of this? I probably need to reset this. Yes. So if I remember correctly, it said, um, let's anchor this. We have to, what block do we have to smack for this? Cause that's gonna be where the front is. We have to, that's the pump jack. Uh, this is heavy machinery squeezer. We are smacking the center piece of wood. So we're smacking this guy. So I, that looks like that's gonna be the front, I guess. You know what? Let's just place it and see what happens. Let's go that way. Bam. Place it all out for me. Do the thing. What am I missing here? What? I had everything. Piston, steel fence, wooden barrels. Four wooden barrels. I have wooden barrels. Didn't I grab the barrels? I may not have grabbed the barrels out of the system. Nope. Okay. All right. Well, whatever. Now I have barrels. Uh, and actually, you know what? This is wooden barrels. I'm going to assume that's treated wood, not regular barrels. Yeah. So we're going to need to get four of these. Tell me I have enough. Oh, so close. There we go. And now if I copy and paste, I should be able to copy those into place. And that's the thing. So now we are smacking this one with our hammer. So I'm going to assume this is going to be the front. So I built this thing completely backwards. So let's go ahead and undo it. You know what? Very indecisive. Let's just build it, see what happens. And if I have to tear it down and reorient it, I will smack that. Uh, honestly, I have no idea. This kind of looks like a front. Input, output, output, redstone control. So we're going to give it a lever. Yeah, honestly, uh, honestly, I have no idea how this block, how this looks. So we're just going to do our thing. OK, so I have this bound to our energy cell here. So we're going to go ahead and not put it here. We're going to grab a universal cable because we have to pump out of this. But that's OK. Then we can grab this, put this here. An extract. So now we're going to get power into this bad boy. Perfect. And then I'm going to assume that we just need to put our coal in here, our coal coke. And I did go ahead and make the uh, coal coke dust that we're going to need. Uh, I put it into our crafting calculator because I decided I wanted to make, I think it was 16 electrodes. Yeah, 16 graphite electrodes. We need 512 coke dust as it stands now uh, at this recipe. So. Yeah, that's a lot of freaking cold coal coke. Let's get a hopper. And we're going to place this on the input. And if I do this, you're going to start inputting. Yeah. And you're doing something. Hey, it is good. Perfect. So we can do this. 
And I guess I need to do a chest as well. Or you know what? I can just bam, bam. Oh, you have actually a nice, decent sized input in there too. Okay, and it's making HOP graphite dust. And it's actually not too slow, to be honest with you, at, at squeezing this out. I'm not going to complain about the speed of this. So what I want to do is then get a, uh, let's get a barrel. And a logistical transporter. And we'll pump this out. Can I set a barrel here? Oh, man, it would be really cool if I could have fit it in that spot. It would have just fit well. So if we do this and then we... Not that. We extract. You'll pull the uh, graphite dust out. Perfect. That's what I want to see. Yeah, and it's actually working pretty quickly. So I'm not going to complain about the speed of this thing. Okay, so that takes care of that. Squeezer is built. Let's go ahead and get our pump jack going so that way we can, uh, you know, get some crude oil and I can kick our PNC stuff back on. Because as of now, it's it's not on at all. Let's go ahead and see what the heck is going on. Why do I have all this extra stuff in my inventory? I feel like it pulled from here stuff that I needed, and I don't know why. So we're just going to do this, put it all back in here, and then when we need to take it out, we'll take it out. So what I want to do now is grab what is called our core sample drill and a lever. The core sample drill uh, is a item that allows you to sample a chunk, right, to see what is inside of said chunk. So if we turn on our chunk boundaries, we can see where we are and we take our core sample drill and we set it down uh, and we give it power. There's going to be an annoying part of this whole process. We're going to have to give it power every single time. But uh, I'll do most of this off camera until we find what we need. But I'm going to show you guys what this looks like, right? So we have our core sample drill. Bam, it has power. We give it a right click with our hammer. It's going to go ahead and sample the world, and it's going to spit out a little item. And that item is going to be a uh, core sample. Give me it. There we go. There's the core sample. And we can take a look at this, and we can say, okay, this has a uh, yield of, oh, geez, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1.795 million uh, cinnabar. Cool. That's a lot of cinnabar. And what we can do is we can actually shift right click to place this in the world. And then that way we know we already worked on this chunk. So what I'm going to do is run around like a chicken with my head cut off, go into each of these chunks and finding one that has crude oil. One of these should eventually have crude oil. So we're just going to let this thing run. I'm going to do do the thing. Let's get all this stuff out of my inventory so I can just do all the work. Uh, and I'm going to actually grab my spare configurator. That way I don't have to even switch around. And we're just going to, you know, go ahead and extract, smack it with the hammer, let it do its thing. And I'm going to find us some crude oil. So we'll be back hopefully, hopefully soon. I pray for my sanity soon that we'll get some crude oil. And hey, what do you know? Look, bam, I didn't even have to worry about it. The next sample was uh, crude oil reservoir. There are 10,574,000 millibuckets down there. So it's about 10,000 buckets of uh, crude oil sitting down in this area. Thank you, core sample drill. You did your great job. And by our second one, we found crude oil. So we can go ahead and turn this off and we can set up our core sample here so we know. But this chunk has oil, so it's not going to look the greatest. We're going to be pumping oil out in our base, but... Uh, we're going to make it work. So what do we need to do now? Well, we need to go ahead and actually get the, uh, you know what, core sample drill. You can go into the uh, backpack as needed. We might need you in the future again. Uh, let's go ahead and reset up our inventory, even though I always do this and then I end up moving stuff around. It's just for, for my sanity's sake. So we're going to go ahead and grab all of this stuff here that we have in our backpack. I'm going to break the core sample drill. We know what chunk this is. I'm going to go grab the uh, copy paste gadget for the pump jack, and then we will come back and build this bad boy. All right, we're back. Let's go ahead and unanchor that from where it was before. We're going to set this down here. And it's a pretty big machine and everything. It's kind of not the prettiest thing in the world. Uh, we will not do that. Oops. Go ahead and we got to keep it in this chunk, but it can come all the way up to the border. And is that good or do I want to rotate it? Uh, let's let's rotate it. Yeah. Keeping it within the chunk, right on the chunk boundary. That way it's kind of away from all of our stuff. Uh, redstone controls here, but we can do that from the back. 
And uh, do we need to build this up one? It kind of seems like it. It kind of seems like we're building this into the ground. Let's go. Yeah, like, look, that, that just looks weird. Why is that there? Well, let's build it, see what happens. Okay. Looks good. What block do we have to smackerate? Also, it looks like we have to have some steel blocks here. Yes, because the steel blocks, it was expecting immersive engineering steel blocks, and we don't have that. We have regular steel, so they need to go into the front here, uh, like so. We have Emendatus Enigmatica steel. It will work. It just doesn't show up as uh, a valid block. Okay, so and then we're smacking the heavy engineering block with our hammer. Invalid structure. Invalid structure. You jerk. Maybe it won't accept the blocks of steel here. Steel. And immersive. Now look, there is no block of steel from immersive engineering. And it says invalid structure. What is it missing? There's like nothing, there's nothing extra showing up here, right? Yeah. Everything is here that should be here. Huh. It's got to be those blocks of steel that it doesn't like. What do I do about this? Can I, can I, can we like, can we stone cut these or, because I know that we can stone cut like ore. Yeah. Gosh, I'm a genius. I am a bona fide genius. Bam. Oh, wait, what? Invalid structure or missing game stage. Appropriate machinery schematic. I have it. Pump Jack is in the schematic for tier two. Pump Jack, medium machinery. I have that. So invalid structure. So what is invalid about this, boyo? Uh, Akashic Tome. What do you want for the bottom layer? Let's do this. Stop. Bring me. This is the worst book. Stop. Nope. Oh. I don't want you to play. I just want to see what I need. Yeah, that's what I have. So it's all of that. All good to go. Right? Right. Fluid pipes. Are these the correct fluid pipes? Maybe the fluid pipes, because they do look a little weird. Maybe uh, the copy-paste gadget didn't place them down appropriately. No, though that, that's exactly how it gets placed down. Just click on all the things. Oh, are you kidding me? I had to click it from the correct side. Oh, that's why, that's why immersive engineering is not really used anymore. Anyway, okay, let's go ahead and do the thing. So we have a uh, redstone control for a lever. We can go ahead and throw that on there. Bam, give it a redstone signal. Now, I believe this requires power somewhere. This is an input slot. Power should be, yeah, there we go. So I do have power ready to go. Uh, what happened there? So we have our nitro cell and a advanced universal cable. Okay. So now it has power. It's going to do its thing. And then we just have to give it a output for its uh, liquid. And I believe... Do you need to be on? Yeah, do your thing. I think we just have to give it an output and it will do what it needs to do. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to give it a mechanical pipe. And we're going to say, hey, you go ahead and output and get to work, buddy. Sir, I would love. There we go. Oh, redstone just needs to be off. Well, then we don't need it. Perfect. And what are we getting in here? Crude oil. Look at that. We already have almost five buckets. It's just going to run. Now, keep in mind, I believe this thing does drain like 10,000. Yeah, look at it. 10,000 RF. So this is draining 10,000 RF per tick. We got 50, 000, or 500,000 available to us, so I'm not concerned about it. But if you are not at this stage of the game, uh, definitely don't set this up and let yourself run out of uh, run out of power to get yourself your crude oil. But I should have one more entangled block in here that is set up to our fluid cell because I preset up all of this stuff for us at the beginning. 
And all I have to do is get rid of these fluid tanks, set this mad boy up here, and he's already extracting, running, doing its thing. And we now have LPG going to be produced. Now keep in mind, like I said, it's only gonna do 10,000 blocks of uh, crude oil. So yeah, now there is a way to make fluids infinite by using create, uh, by using 10,000 blocks. If you set up a, a, a pool of 10,000 blocks of source blocks uh, and then you put a create pump in there, it will count it as an infinite source. And then you will always have infinite of said liquid. Maybe I'll set up another one of these to do that part and pump that out. And, uh, you know, I think there's like a fluid outlet that we can use. Yeah, from immersive engineering, we can set this up to just pour the fluid into our 10,000 block pit or whatever but i'm not worried about it right now eventually yes i'm sure it's going to be needed but for now we're okay so anyway let's go back over to our factory let's grab all of our stuff out of our squeezer because i'm going to assume this bad boy has finished there is our hop graphite dust uh, and i happen to have some more coal coke in here so we'll let this run through but we shouldn't need to worry about it at the moment because we're going to convert all of this over to ingots any other usage for this other than converting it to ingots does not look to be the case. So let's go ahead and throw this into any of these redstone furnaces. This one looks like it'll do. Time in a bottle this. That was too much. That's okay. It'll finish off the process and we're good to go. Cool. So then we should have our HOP ingots very slowly extracting from that interface. We really do need to get speed upgrades going. I need to get glycerol uh, taken care of and everything. It's on my to-do list. We need to get uh, vegetable oil and glycerol starting to produce. So if we pop over here, I should be able to grab my arc furnace electrodes blueprint, swap this out, put those in and grab as many of those as I can. Uh, and that was everything that we had in our system. Okay, cool. So we'll swap these back out put that there and we have 14 of these available to us now i am most likely going to have to adjust the recipe of this because these have nbt data um it was the energy cube right this guy the nbt data on these is going to expect these graphites uh i'm just going to go ahead and grab our graphite electrode one of them we're going to replace this because these are real the ones that were in here were not real graphite electrodes. They were theoretical, I guess you could say. This is real, we have this, we can do what we want with this. We're gonna hit exact mode on this so that it knows to use these. That is very important because I've been running into an issue with this crafting process where uh, certain things that require the fluid cell frames, for example, our hardened integral components, and I actually need to fix this recipe because I've been having to do it by hand. It says we don't have any fluid cells or redstone flux cells, but if we look, flux cells we have them so what i've been doing is just bulk crafting these and letting them sit in there and then doing the thing but it's a, it's it's a pain to set up so if i take that recipe for the hardened integral component uh yes if we do this and i go ahead and craft one of these redstone flux cell redstone um fluid cell which i probably have one in here an empty one yes so this is real and then flux cell, you are now real. If I take this recipe and I replace the flux cell with this one, and I replace this theoretical one with an actual one, set it to exact mode, pop these in, this should now be able to craft these properly, and I don't have to do any workarounds. Bam. Now it says that they exist. And if I wanted to, because I have those in there, if I wanted to craft more of them, we can. We just need the rubber. But it says it's going to craft 63 of these, so we're good to go. So as I run into those recipes that complain, uh, we'll fix them. But yeah, basically that's where it stands. So what do we need to do now? Well, uh, we need to make ourselves fluid laser bases. In order to do so, we are going to need three induction cells. So let's go ahead and craft that. Bam. And we should have everything we need to do this now. All the stuff is available in the system. It's going to have to craft five of those refined obsidian. So it's going to use 80 diamond dust, uh, which is a lot. But we're going to kick this off. It's going to create these things for us and do the thing. And then we'll be able to get our fluid laser bases next episode. Now, again, we also need at least one laser drill for each of these. Before we do the laser drill thing, though, we are going to go ahead and make ourselves an enrichment chamber. And maybe, you know what, we should make the enrichment chamber before we do any of this stuff. 
Yeah, why am I doing that? That way I don't have to use so much of the diamond dust. Let's do this recipe first. So I'm going to kick this off. It's still going to use, uh, geez Louise, it's still going to use 80 diamond dust, 80 of these to do this, but we're only going to have to do this the one time and then we'll be able to do the uh, craft to make all this stuff significantly cheaper and we'll set ourselves up uh, for the future. I'm also going to go ahead and make uh, three more metallurgic infusers. You know how to make these. We're missing a bunch of stuff. Spider eyes, compressed iron ingots, uh, the compressed iron ingots we can take care of. I can teach the system how to do it too, but you know, we have tons of blocks. We have a villager that sells us blocks of those. So, and then the blazing rods, it knows how to make them, but again, it's the same issue. These have, you know, these have time MBT data and some recipe here for the metallurgic infuser is not allowing it. So let's see the blazing agitator. I want to assume you use those energy using rods, but I'm pretty sure I already set you to exact mode. Let's grab these. We're going to just click these out and then we're going to do one, two, three, four. Exact mode. Bam. How about now? Nope. See, it's still it, it. I cannot craft the blazing rods, so I'm going to have to manually make the blazing rods, which is fine. I mean, it's not like it's expensive or anything. Uh, let's just do 16 so we have some extra in the system. It's just going to take some time and some power. And then the spider eyes is going to be an issue. What do you need spider eyes for, though? Etching acid, I'm assuming. Yeah, 95 buckets of in because it has to create these capacitors. Jeez Louise. And there's no other recipe for metallurgic infusers. Nope. It's because it needs these power cells. Each of these power cells requires a power core. So there's the destabilized redstone. Uh, and then it also needs to make the transformer. No, not that. There's something here. Something's requiring capacitors. I don't even know what. You, 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 it's these. These guys are requiring capacitors, one each or two each, which is four, which is six, which is etching acid. So, yeah, it's going to take a while to get this. Is there a better recipe for etching acid, maybe? Or is it literally uh, only this stuff? Molten plastic and monster mash. And you know what? How are you crafting this, by the way? Okay, so I did teach it. I've taught it so many things, I don't even know what I've done. So I guess I taught it Monster Mash? No, so how are you making this? One bucket of molten plastic, rotten flesh, spider egg, gunpowder. Yeah, I don't. that's not the recipe anymore then, is it? Did they change this? Because this is etching acid here or a bucket. Oh, you know what? I'm making it as a bucket directly. Two, 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 a bucket there or two, two, two. So it's the exact same thing with a bucket of molten plastic. It can just be done in a thermonomatic processing plant instead of the uh, pressure chamber. Really doesn't matter uh, to me either way how we do it. We'll make the buckets. That's perfectly fine. But we need to get more spider eyes. So I guess uh, it's nighttime. I'm going to go hunting spiders. Luckily, we have a lot of fortune or looting on our thing. I'm going to get a bunch of spider eyes and we're going to do the thing. But anyway, that's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I do appreciate it. And it really does help out the channel. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.